this was all rendered in Blender. I'm not sure why 3ds Max has become the more popular software for rendering paint schemes. There may be a good reason, but in my eyes, Blender has everything you need. It's a completely free program, it's the software of choice for some professionals, and it's easily capable of giving you great results. Just check out the subreddit if you need convincing. But for one reason or another, people never put up Blender files for a download. So I'm going to show you how to set up a Blender scene with the Car Viewer files. First, download the Car Viewer files for the mod you want. It's okay if you've never used Car Viewer to test your paint schemes before, but if you're familiar with it, the Car Viewer files contain the 3D models for the mod as X files, and all the textures, usually as bitmap or target files. Now, Blender doesn't support X files, but we can easily convert them to OBJ files with this website. In some cases, like the Splash and Go Gen 6 mod, they already give you the OBJ files, so that's nice of them. Save the OBJ files to the same folder that all the assets came from. This should make it so that the textures automatically load in when you import them to Blender. Now we have everything we need, so it's Blender time. Delete the cube, of course, and I'll delete the light as well. Let's set up some other stuff while we're at it. Click on this tab and make sure you're using EV for your render engine. Why EV and not Cycles? I could go on explaining it, but the short answer is this happens a lot with these NR2003 mods, and I found a fix in EV, but not Cycles. Next, check ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. This ultimately makes the shading look better. Go to the upper right here and click this drop down and check move. It just lets us easily move objects. Let's also make sure we're in object mode. We won't really need the other modes for our purposes. Now it's time to really get started. Import the OBJ file and orient it right side up if it isn't already. You can left click the car and the second set of tabs will appear. You can use this orange tab with the square on it to make exact adjustments to the position. Now the car is upright, let's add a floor to our scene by clicking Add Mesh Plane. I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom out, then left click on the plane, hit S to scale it, and then left click to finish. Finally, I'll click the car, go back to this position tab, and eyeball the placement so the tires touch the ground. By the way, if you're new to this and you're struggling with moving around in the viewport comfortably, go ahead and just take 10 minutes or so familiarizing yourself with the controls. Maybe even look up another tutorial if you're really struggling. Now, up in the upper right corner of the viewport, click that fourth icon to load in the textures. Side note here, when I was first trying this, it was with the Gen 6 Camaro. Blender would always crash when I hit this button. If Blender's crashing for you at any point, I'd suggest uh, re-downloading and reconverting the car viewer files. If that doesn't work, maybe even uninstalling and reinstalling Blender. But if everything's working, you should see something like this. If you're not seeing textures, double check that you saved the OBJ file in the original folder with all the car viewer stuff. If you still don't see any, don't worry, we can just manually apply them. Let's left click the car, click this tab, the materials tab. Now every one of these boxes represents a different material, so you have the paint scheme itself and the windows, the tires, engine, etc. So click the one you want and then click this, image texture, open, then manually select the file that the texture is for. This is also what you would do if you just wanted to change the texture of something, say Pepsi wheels. All right, everyone's on the same page now and we're seeing textures on the car, albeit kind of glitchy looking. This is because there are polygons that should be invisible that are well visible. They're intersecting the parts that we're supposed to be seeing. To fix this, just click on the car, click the materials tab, and for each one of the materials, check back face cullen. Everything should be fine now. And really, that's a wrap on bringing the car from NR2003 into Blender. Everything from this point on in the video is going to show you how to light and render your scene. However, there are people out there that are much more experienced than me on these topics, so keep that in mind. My process is going to get you some pretty good results if I do say so myself, but I encourage you to go out and keep learning Blender so you can improve on the stuff I'm going to show you, because I still have a lot to learn myself. Anyway, let's set up the camera so the car is properly in frame for when we render it. If you hit zero on your number pad, that sets your viewport view to where your camera is. And just hit number pad zero again to bring you back to where you were. You can move around in the viewport and then hit control alt zero to instantly put the camera to where you are. If you don't have a number pad, one workaround is you can use this button to switch to the camera view. Then to move around, click camera in the top right. Then go to the position tab and fine tune the position of the camera with the values there. Now I'm sick of looking at this dark car, so I'm going to add some spotlights like so to give the car some ambient lighting. 
I typically make them big and I turn the blend up to one to get rid of that harsh line. And I set the power somewhere in the ballpark of 1500 watts. The power you give to your lights can vary drastically based on the color and design choices on your paint scheme. There have been times where I've cranked the lights up to 9000 watts. I also like adding point lights to whatever area looks like needs them. And these are usually between 100 and 1000 watts, with a larger size to make the lighting less harsh. The lighting is really something you can make your own. I definitely don't follow a super strict set of rules. I just see what my render needs with trial and error. But don't finalize your lighting yet though. First, we need to mess with the materials. This is where you can give your car a super glossy finish, a matte finish, or somewhere in between. Click on the car and then click on the materials tab and click on the material with the paint scheme on it. We have all these parameters here and you can mess with all of them but the ones I find myself touching the most are metallic and roughness. I usually set the metallic to a high value and then mess around with the roughness to get the right amount of reflection. Don't forget to do this for other materials too. For instance, the tires I'll usually have at a high metallic and high roughness. That way it doesn't harshly reflect light. Windows are tricky. I'm using this setup that gives me reflections but no transparency. If anyone can figure out how to properly do it, please let me know. One last material that we can't forget is the floor. I'm going to click on the plane, add material, and I like to use a glossy BDSF, a dark color, and enough roughness to barely get a reflection, and I think that looks great. So now all the materials are in place, everything looks great, it's all lit up, and you can hit F12 to render your image. Once you're happy with that, save it, and you're done. So go out right now. If you have a paint scheme, render it in Blender because it looks awesome and it's free. Um, and go ahead and while you're at it, mess around, try some new things because it's capable of way more than what I showed you in this video and I'm still learning. If you have any tips for me uh, as I'm learning or if I made a mistake in this video or if you have any information that'll help people at all, especially that glass thing, just leave it in the comments uh, and I'll see you later.